Jane says she's a loser. All she needs is somebody to talk to, and... What you got there? The Stars and Stripes, Pung San, Korea, September 3rd, 1953. MASH unit surgeon delivers triplets under fire. This is all about Dr. McIntyre. Right. Well, these clippings are 20-something years old. What are you doing with them? Collecting them. What for? Please sit down. I'll tell you all about it. Forty-three. Forty-three. Whew. Not bad. Ah. Uh. <coughs> uh, Trapper, we gotta talk. Yeah? What? Uh, I don't quite know how to tell you this. Uh, even I will admit that it's pretty wild. What? Well, you know that, that uh, young guy I was telling you about? The one we put on at the hospital is an orderly. You may have seen him around. He's half Korean, half American. His name's Charlie Chang. So what are you trying to tell me? <laughs> like I said, it's kind of crazy. Well, come on already. He says he's your son. That's supposed to be the father of somebody named Charlie Chang? I just had a long talk with him, Trapper, and he claims Ever since he was old enough to scrounge for cigarette butts on the streets of Seoul, he's been looking for his old man. And I met. Well, even he admits the evidence is circumstantial. There's no witnesses. Well, then that explains all the snide looks and comments I've been getting lately from Stanley and uh, Langley. Why is the father always the last to know? I'm sorry, Trevor. Look, if the whole thing is ridiculous and Charlie becomes a nuisance, we can get rid of him. What do you mean? Well, we can fire him. Well, of course, that may create a problem. If you get rid of him, he'll probably think you're trying to shirk your responsibility as a father. But then on the other hand, if you keep him on, you'll probably be accused of nepotism. Oh, now, wait a minute. What makes you so damn sure he's my son? Well, I'm not sure. I just assumed... Well, let's not assume so much, huh? Stanley says he's a spitting image. Does he really look like me? Only when he clenches his jaw. <laughs> Look, why don't you judge for yourself? You want to meet him, don't you? Yeah, well, never let it be said I passed up an opportunity to meet my own son. I'll set it up. Charlie Chang. Yeah, I know how you feel. Didn't even get to pick the name. <laughs> Fit. Do you know of a little town in Korea called Pansan? Yes, I do. We were stationed a few miles from there. I lived there with my mother. Do you remember a woman called Sue? No. No, I don't. I hardly remember her myself. She was killed in a mortar attack when I was one. Tell me something, Charlie. What makes you think that your mother and I were lovers? I've been told that someone with your name someone who was a doctor with the American army in Korea. I've also been told that she loved this American doctor very much. He always brought some food, medicine. But they said it was his friendship and love that meant the most. Well, does any of this come back to you? Well, it was a long time ago. Sorry if I'm not living up to your expectations. Sure. Why should you believe you're my father? Because I say so. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to lay this heavy trip on you, upset your neat and orderly life, Dr. McIntyre. If you would excuse me, gentlemen. You gonna be all right? Oh, yeah. I'll just sit here for a while. Pretty impressive, Stanley. What made you look in the ear canal when she was brought in? It's just one of those hot flashes I get that make medicine so exciting. Mm. 
Oh, I've got to hand it to you, Stan. As rare as it is, it's got all the signs of a glomus jugulari tumor. Oh, yes. Yes, yes. Listen, don't be too hard on Jackson for overlooking it. The kid will come around with experience. And hot flashes. You plan to operate? That depends on Harriet and the rest of the test results. Listen, Gonzo, if you need any more help, you just let me know. Good man, Stanley. It's a miracle. Surgery? I know I was looking for attention, but aren't you overdoing it a little? Well, we still got a few tests to run before we can be absolutely sure. Oh, come on, Doc. I'm taking up space and you know it. Harriet, this Besides, is... Besides, an operation can loss up my malingering act. This is for real. Hospitals aren't for cutting. They're for picking up guys. <laughs> what happens if I don't have the operation? In this case, Harriet, uh, surgery is probably the best treatment. You didn't answer my question. Okay. If it goes untreated, it can result in paralysis of the face and a severe hearing loss. In fact, it could kill you. I think I'm going to check into San Jose for a second hospital opinion. Well, you have that right, Harriet, but why don't you at least wait until we get all the tests back? Because I can tell by the look on your face that you already decided to carve me up. But you need my consent, right? If you want to talk it over with your family or... Oh, they've already gone the way of the pterodactyl and the white rhino. Well, in that case, it's your decision. Give me a little time, okay? Maybe I can uh, come up with somebody else I can check with. Okay. But don't take too long. Remember it. How could I forget it? It rained there for 36 days straight. So what do you think about all this? Huh? I mean, you've known me a pretty long time. Now, do you think this sort of thing could have happened? Oh, listen, sweetheart, in that kind of weather, anything could have happened. And it usually did. Now, look, help me out, will you? I'm, I'm talking about me and a woman named Sook. I know who you're talking about. It's all over the hospital. <laughs> no kidding. Look, Trapper, after 19 hours in surgery, trying to patch up broken bodies only so they can die some more, you were looking for a lot of solace. <laughs> maybe, maybe somebody named Sook supplied it. Yeah, but I don't, I don't remember her. I mean, I remember, uh, Kyung, he, hmm. Haeha, and various and sundry other ladies of the nursing corps, but uh, no, Sook. Well, between your fatigue and that brew that you and Hawkeye used to distill from uh, embalming fluid and prune pits, <laughs> listen, after a drink of that, you're lucky to remember anything. Oh, you can say that again. Hey, where'd you learn how to play like that? In my neighborhood, you played pool or you bled a lot. We didn't have any time for a lot of bingo. I still say you uh, hit the lucky streak. What do you say would make the bed more interesting, huh, Martinez? Oh, you're so kind to me. <laughs> I gave you permission to get out of bed, Martinez. I feel good, Doc, honest. Sack time. Mm. Point kill. Why do I have this crazy suspicion that you were hustling him, Charlie? Me? Maybe it was the other way around. You know, for a guy who claims to be broke, that's a nice fistful of green you were flashing there. You moonlighting somewhere? I got lucky. You know, I've been thinking, we, we might just be wasting Charlie's talents as an orderly. You think so, huh? Yeah, I think he could be of more use to us. <sighs> Sound like you're ready to adopt him. Well, if you're going to adopt anybody, it might as well be somebody you could be related to. Trapper, this whole thing. This whole thing about Charlie being your son could be a scam. Scam? Well, that's true, it could be. But you don't think so? Do you? Yeah. First, I wasn't sure, but I keep getting the impression that he's a hustler. Well, of course he's a hustler. He's 
been a hustler all his life he's had to h